Hey everybody, we're back for another episode of Ask a GN where we answer your questions. So if you have questions for next episode, post them below. I'll try and get to a few of them. We normally do four or five per episode, but that said, let's jump right into it. So coming out of PAX here, we decided to round up the questions from the last episode. And the first one is from Obzen who says, Hey Steve, would you be able to explain these various voltage settings I found in my UEFI? They are VCCIO, VCC PLL, and VCSSA, thanks. <clears throat> so these are all overclock settings for the CPU or parts of the CPU. Uh, VCC is voltage core or V core. That is the one that refers generally when someone's talking about increasing the voltage to their CPU. There's a lot of different voltages you can increase. So if someone just says blanket statement, I needed to increase the voltage by 0.65 volts, uh, normally they're talking about VCC or V core in other definitions. And that's what you use to sort of stabilize the entire thing if you're just trying to increase the clock rate or the multiplier. The next question was VCCIO. VCCIO is the input output voltage control. That's what the IO means, just like anywhere else in computing. And VCCIO is used primarily for managing the integrated memory uh, controller. So memory controller was moved from the motherboard to CPUs a long time ago now at this point. It used to be a separate component on the motherboard, just like Intel's got their Fiverr, which is their integrated voltage regulator module on, I think the first one that did it might have been Haswell or maybe before that, but either way, they moved the VRM onto the CPU. That used to be a separate component on motherboards as well. It was still there throughout this time, but it became less important. That's going away eventually. Fiverr will be gone, but uh, that's beside the point. The VCCIO is for managing the memory controller for the most part voltage. So if you're increasing your clock rates on your memory pretty heavily and you're having issues with stability, but fine tuning the tertiary settings on the memory isn't fixing it, then uh, the VCCIO setting is where I would start looking next if it's a CPU stability issue. Most good motherboards will do this for you though. They'll fine tune that like the X99 boards a lot will do that. <clears throat> next one was VCC PLL. So PLL is phase locked loop. You'll see this in uh, almost all of the AMD AM3 plus motherboard settings as well, the PLL settings. VCC PLL is for the, uh, the clock multiplier. So it governs the multiplier. So if you're having issues maintaining stability as you increase the multiplier, that is one of the finer tuned settings you can play with if you don't want to leave it in auto. Uh, generally, you don't need to mess with this on your own. It should, auto should sort of sort things out. But if you're going more extreme with your overclock, it's worth definitely playing around with. And, uh, and AMD's got some different PLL settings that should be spoken about separately, which we'll do in a future video potentially. Next, the last one was VCSSA, and that is the system agent voltage. So uh, that one is for the base clock stability. So you have IO for memory clock or memory controller stability. You have uh, normal VCC V core, and then you have SA or the agent, and that is for base clock. So if you're doing fine tuning on the base clock, which kind of became a bigger thing in the last few generations, then you'd begin playing around with the VCS or SA setting in UEFI. So hopefully that answers those briefly anyway. Next question is from Centmarch who says, considering AMD's poor results over the last years in market share compared to those of its competitors, if the next Polaris GPU lineup doesn't make AMD's market share go up, should we expect it to be the last generation of Team Red GPUs? That's uh, certainly a big statement. Same question for Zen architecture on the CPU side. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't think, even, uh, even if, it, if it failed pretty badly by AMD standards, I don't think it would be the last generation because uh, Vega is pretty close or Vega is pretty close. It should be end of year or early next year. So that's already well within production and will probably be shipping almost no matter what at this point. But, I mean, that would be a pretty big failure to, to trigger something like that, especially because Samsung has sort of bailed out NVIDIA or AMD recently. So Samsung and NVIDIA have been engaged in a battle. They're legally fighting each other over a million different patent infringement lawsuits. They've both lost and gained ground. Um, and then AMD and Samsung have been working together. And so Samsung is manufacturing the new silicon for AMD and that is definitely going to be helping AMD. Now, one part of speculation here is, is it possible that the GPU division, ATI, formerly, could be spun off? And I think that is a possibility, depending on 
how things go over the next few months for AMD. But uh, if, it, if it were to happen, I would have Samsung at the top of my list for interested buyers. Uh, I don't think we're there just yet though, and I don't know that we'll get there. As for Zen, uh, <laughs> their CPUs have been pretty weak. So FX is the last major CPU architecture from AMD in the sort of core gaming market, the enthusiast market. FX is not particularly strong anymore. And that leaves their APUs and their locked, their IGP locked CPUs, which basically cover the low end and maybe mid range APU market. So Zen's pretty important for them, but um, I, I don't have a lot of speculation on that right now because it's still a decent ways out. Polaris though is right around the corner as is Pascal. Next question is from Oberst, who I think we've answered these questions before and I still can't pronounce your name, so post it below. Uh, unless you enjoy that. This one, okay, how about this one? Fraps hasn't been updated for three years. Do you know of any program that's going to take its place in a Vulkan DX12 world that is a program with the usability, stability, and functionality of Fraps? So far, I've only seen recommend recommendations of software that doesn't quite do everything I want it to do, is the, uh, the paraphrase there. So uh, Fraps does a lot of things. We use it for benchmarking actually still on frame times. And that's pretty hard to find elsewhere. Afterburner tries to do it, but does a poor job, isn't as in-depth with the frame times. And uh, NDXT's CAM is in active development. We've actually been working with them to try and help them develop CAM to do the things we wanted to do on the review side. So that is one that I've, I've personally done a lot of testing with and have validated to some degree, but it's still got a ways to go. And the trouble here is because uh, these, the software is built for DX11, so it has trouble talking through the new APIs. It can't really see through it. Fraps especially has issues where you just can't even use it in almost all cases with the new APIs. So that necessitates a new software tool. And games like Ashes of Singularity have the, all the FPS monitoring built in because they know this is a problem, but they still want to be a benchmark for the new APIs. So CAM would be where I'd be looking. I know they're trying to support DX12 and Vulkan Afterburner. Uh, I know I was trying to support it as well, but I'm, I'm not too happy with the Afterburner FPS monitoring. But neither of these really does sort of what Fraps does, which is everything. And Fraps does not do video well, so that's not something I would really say is stable or good. It's, it's very abusive. It's like four gigabytes per minute. You're better off with Shadowplay or GVR, or whatever they're calling it now for AMD. OBS is better than Fraps for video. Uh, so there's a lot of tools out there for video that I would do before Fraps, but uh, there's nothing that really does it all. So you're kind of segmented right now. It's like Shadowplay, GVR, OBS, or video, and then Cam for DX12, Vulkan, FPS, hopefully. But they have some, uh, some stuff to work out still, especially on the accuracy of the 1% and 0.1% lows. Next question, last question actually. Jonathan Cave says, I'm tempted to sell my 980 Ti whilst I wait for Pascal and Polaris. Which of these look more promising on the limited information as of now? Uh, so that we can't really comment on because of a lot of reasons, but mostly that neither of them is out and in the hands of reviewers, so we don't have numbers. And just based on the architectures, we've the, the limited architecture information we've seen, it's not really time to say which one looks more promising other than wait for reviews and see how those look. We know that both of them will be reducing T TDP. Polaris certainly did it in the CES demo. They were running lower TDP, but also they had an FPS lock. And we knew the GTX 950 was probably outperforming the Polaris card in terms of raw FPS. But Polaris was far and away outperforming the 950 in terms of TDP. But then Pascal is going to lower TDP too. So they might actually end up being neck and neck in that scenario. As far as FPS, that's just going to have to be tested that we haven't seen any demos for just yet. So. Uh, I can't really answer that question right now. Should you sell the 980 Ti? I don't know. That's still a really good card. One question here, of course, to pay attention to is which GPU will AMD and Nvidia ship first? Because in the past, they've both done this thing where they either ship the high end first, like in this case, we'll call it a 1080 or call it a 490X or something like that. They'll either ship the high end or in recent generations, like with Maxwell version one, Nvidia shipped the low end, the 750 Ti. So if you sell your 980 Ti today and they end up shipping a low-end card first, you could be waiting a pretty long time for a comparable card to come out. Uh, but we'll just see which one they decide to ship first once it happens, which is probably around or before slightly after Computex, so sometime in the next 30-ish, maybe 60 days, one to two months. 
So that is all for this time. If you have more questions, post them in the comments below. We'll get to them next time. As always, Patreon link in the post for video. Hit the link in the description below for more information. GamersAccess.net for the website. I'll see you all next time.